Hello, hello, and welcome to Beat the Bookie. I'm Liam Griffin, and over the next few minutes, I'll be your best friend as I attempt to put a stack of green bags in your pocket. But before we get into my picks, let's take a look at how my friend Danny Tao did last week. Not the best day for DT, over $12 into the red. The first step of round robin parlay in show history was a big old swing and a miss. Let's see where that puts Danny in our semester long standings. Okay, Danny, not terrible. Fifth out of seven, but still not great. At least you didn't stoop down to the levels of Ben Spector and Joe Puccio. For the record, a place I have no intention of going anywhere near. Jack Gordon, though, $86 into the green. That is the gold standard I am seeking to beat today. And there is no rest for the wicked on BTV. So let's hit the ground running. We begin with our big games of the week, and there's no bigger clash in college football this weekend than the one going down in Salt Lake City. In this match matchup, you have a pair of top 15 teams in Oregon and Utah that each have one loss. Both these teams have been solid against the spread this season. The Ducks are 5-1, while the Utes are 4-2. In this case, I'm going to go with the hotter team. Oregon's last two games have been a meltdown loss to Michael Penix in Washington and an unimpressive victory over a Washington State team that frankly was chopped liver after a 44-6 loss to Arizona the week prior. On the other end, the Utes have bounced back nicely after a tough loss to Oregon State a few weeks ago, handling noted ACC powerhouse Cal and winning a thriller on the road at USC. Utah has played at a more consistent level than Oregon this season. A line of 6.5 feels a bit much for two teams separated by just five spots in the rankings, not to mention this is a home game for the Utes as well, so we'll put $10 on Utah to cover plus six and a half. On to the SEC, if it feels like Georgia has been hanging on by a thread all season, it's because it has. The Bulldogs are an abysmal one and five against the spread this season. Now Florida will be the toughest opponent Kirby Smart's crew has seen this year. Make no mistake about it though, I dislike the Gators too. Their offense with Graham Mertz under center has been mired with inconsistency all season, but I do not dislike them as much as I dislike the Bulldogs. This Georgia team is practically number one by default, considering its status as back-to-back -back national champions, and none of the teams looking up at that top spot have done anything worthy of taking that crown. You're telling me that a Bulldogs team that had difficulties exerting its dominance over South Carolina, Auburn, even Vanderbilt, is going to cover 14 and a half against the flaky but talented Gator squad? I'm not buying it, pun intended. 10 buckaroos on Florida to cover at home. Wrapping up our big games in the Big Ten, we head to Madison, where Wisconsin will challenge number three, Ohio State. When you look at the Badgers' 5-2 record, you're probably at minimum somewhat impressed. But when you consider that those five wins have come against Buffalo and Georgia Southern, as well as three mediocre Big Ten teams in Purdue, Rutgers, and Illinois, it doesn't exactly strike fear in the hearts of Buckeye fans. Plus, the last time Wisconsin took the field at Camp Randall Stadium, it put up a measly six points in a loss to Iowa. For all the talk about Kyle McCord's struggles and him not being the guy, I feel confident that he and Marvin Harrison Jr. can cover a 14 and a half point spread alone. There's also optimism around the Ohio State locker room that receiver Emeka Ibuka could return from injury, but with or without him, we'll throw Diaz Dolores on the Buckeyes to cover 14 and a half. Now let's take a look at whether the folks behind the scenes agree with me. Oh my gosh, look at that picture of me coming in on a day. It was three degrees outside with a negative 20 wind chill. I don't know where you dug that one up. All right, we're in agreement on just one out of three. Jordan Leonard and Ethan Frank, not too happy with my picks of Utah and Florida, but we'll see who's talking after this weekend. Moving on to my best bets, remember JT Daniels from Georgia? He's now the signal caller for the Harvard of the South, Rice, in its first year in the American. And he and the Owls take on that conference's cream of the crop this weekend in Tulane. I'll give credit where credit is due. Rice snapped an eight-year bowl drought last season, but with the exception of an unbelievable 2013 campaign, the Owls had been fighting for relevancy in Conference USA for years, and the American is a step up. Meanwhile, the Green Wave made that transition a decade ago, and it's finally starting to pay off. Tulane looks poised for another double-digit win campaign, and even though this game is deep in the heart of Texas, I have no faith in a Rice team that lost at home to UConn to keep it within single digits against the top 25 team. 10 bucks on the Green Wave to cover on the road. And speaking of UConn, the Huskies venture up I-84 to take on Boston College at noon on Saturday. The good feelings and program on the up and up talk that littered throughout stores are a thing of the past. UConn is 1-6 on the whole, including a dreadful 0-5 at beautiful Rensselaer Field, doing a disservice to that venue. As for the Eagles, all the talk about wanting Jeff Hathley gone has legitimacy, but yanking Emmett Moorhead in favor of T Thomas Castellanos has been a game-changing decision. Castellanos staked his claim as a dual threat QB. He leads BC in rushing yards. Yes, the loss to Northern Illinois was awful, as was almost falling to Holy Cross, but Boston College's season appears back on track, backed by an impressive 15-point win against at Georgia Tech last week. 
A UConn team that no one is afraid of whatsoever is a layup to keep that momentum going. $10 on the Eagles to cover 14 and a half against the Huskies. Heading out west to South Bend where Notre Dame battles Pitt at 3.30 on Saturday. Let's face it. The Panthers are about as mediocre as teams come by. The Phil Dracovic experiment at the start of the season was a complete disaster, and with the exception of a 38-point outburst against Louisville two weeks ago, 2-5 two Pitt has been nothing special, especially on offense this year. Notre Dame has the best offense Pat Narduzzi's squad will see this season, and the Irish defense has been potent all year. Pitt also has just one win against the spread in seven games. The Panthers aren't going to contain Sam Hartman, but one Alexander Hamilton on Notre Dame to cover 20 and a half. Elsewhere on the Atlantic Coast, can we officially declare Clemson's glory days over? The Tigers have three losses in ACC play for the first time since 2010. Not many saw that coming. This weekend, Dabo Swinney and company head to Raleigh to take on NC State, and oh boy, is Devin Leary missed there. The reunion of quarterback Brennan Armstrong and offensive coordinator Robert and I has flopped tremendously to the point where Wolfpack head coach Dave Doran benched Armstrong. MJ Morris has been solid in his place, but nothing spectacular. Additionally, though the three losses have been concerning, how Clemson has bounced back the first two times speaks volumes. Putting up 66 in a merciless beatdown of Charleston Southern, then humbling Syracuse in front of a raucous JMA Dome crowd. This pick has more to do with the Wolfpack being bad as opposed to the Tigers being good, but if there's one thing Swinney and company have done well this year, it's bounced back after a loss, 15 on Clemson to cover minus 9.5. For my dog of the week, we venture back to the south where Mississippi State visits Auburn. I don't think I could find two more middling SEC teams if I tried. The Bulldogs sit at 4-3 and three and the Tigers 3-4. and four. But if you look a little closer, these are two teams trending in opposite directions. Mississippi State comes into this one off two straight wins, including a 7-3 triumph at Arkansas last weekend. Shout out Nick Luttrell. On the other hand, Auburn has lost four straight. To its credit, three of them have been to ranked teams, but two of those losses were by seven points at home. Defeats like that take a piece out of a team. I think if this game was being played in Starkville as opposed to Auburn, the Bulldogs would probably be favored, but since that's not the case, I see value in riding with the team that saw it. $10 on Mississippi State Moneyline to quote, upset Auburn, plus 190 is unbelievably good value. For my parlay, we've got a little bit of everything here. We've got a spread pick with Maryland covering 13 and a half in Evanston against Northwestern. The Turks hot start may have fizzed out after losses to Ohio State and Illinois, but the Wildcats represent a get right game if there ever was such a thing. We've got a money line play, number 18 Louisville to beat number 20 Duke at home. Even before the Cardinals lost to Pitt on the road a few weeks ago, they were a much better team at home. And Blue Devils QB Riley Leonard's health is a concern even if he does play. Finally, a 63 and a half over underline feels extreme to begin with. Add in the fact that the over has hit once this season in a game that UCLA has been involved in, and Colorado's offense is extremely spotty. You can hate me for it, but it is begging for me to take the under. Combine these three and put $10 down, that's 45 bucks in your pocket. For my future pick with the first college football playoff ranking set to release next week, it's only fitting I leave you with my picks to make the college football playoff. Starting with Georgia, even though I mentioned I don't like the Bulldogs, with the cupcake schedule they have in front of them, they'll be A-OK. -okay. There's no hiding from the fact that one of Michigan or Ohio State will lose simply because they play each other, but as long as it's a competitive game and neither of them lose one they shouldn't, expect to see both of them in the semifinals on New Year's Day. Finally, all Florida State has to do to get in is beat Wake Forest, Pittsburgh, Miami, North Alabama, and Florida, then win the ACC championship against an inferior team. Yeah, shiver me timbers. Washington could go undefeated, but it shouldn't surprise you if they do, and the Huskies are still on the outside looking in. Even with that, I think they could have trouble with Oregon State on November 18th. We'll put our last $5 on the Bulldogs, Wolverines, Buckeyes, and Seminoles to qualify for the college football playoff. That will net just under $34. To recap, $100 to work with. Oregon at Utah, Utes to cover. The Gators will cover at home against the Bulldogs. Ohio State will go on the road and take care of business at Wisconsin. Tulane to take care of business against Rice. The Sickos will defend the nut in Chestnut Hill. Notre Dame will take care of business against Pittsburgh. Clemson, 15 bucks on it. That's the lock of the week to cover on the road against the Wolfpack. Mississippi State will again, quote, upset Auburn. We have a parlay and a future pick to round these out. One last note, fade these picks at your own risk. That'll do it for Beat the Bookie with our producers Ethan Frank and Jordan Leonard and everyone else behind the scenes. I'm Liam Griffin. Thanks so much for tuning in. Enjoy college football Saturday and please bet responsibly.